drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi friends welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lecture we discussed about binary isomorphism system we saw what are the informations that can we extract from a phase diagram and uh, what a binary isomorphism system is today we'll discuss about how exactly do we get those phase diagrams right uh, till now what i have presented is we have a phase diagram but how do we extract that phase diagram where do we get that information from i have already given you the background of where do we get the phase diagram from we get it from free energy curves right the equilibrium phase at any condition will be those phases which leads to lowest free energy state so basically lowering of free energy gives us the phases that will be stable and thereby we get the phase diagram so the fundamental thing is the free energy curves that is what i will discuss in this lecture and free energy as we know free energy over here it is represented by g small g is a function of internal energy and entropy okay i'll not go into the details of it but the free energy curve is either like this or in some cases some special cases it turns out to be like this but most of the cases you will see this kind of a behavior for the free energy curve okay now let us see a uh, how do we create a isomorphous phase diagram what we will do is that we will take a snapshot of the free energy of all the possible phases at different temperature okay for this case uh, we have represented five temperatures here we start from highest temperature t1 at t1 we draw the phase diagram uh, rather the free energy curve for the solid phase and the liquid phase here we what we see is that at t1 the solid free energy curve gs is this one and the liquid free energy curve is this one what we observe is that for all composition this is the composition axis this is the free energy axis for all composition the free energy of the liquid is lower than the free energy of the solid what this means is that at temperature t1 liquid is the stable phase throughout liquid is more stable than the solid state at any composition okay let's come to temperature t m a this basically represents temperature melting temperature of component a over here what we see is that g is equal to h minus t delta s okay so with lowering of temperature with lowering of temperature the negative term decreases thereby the g increases okay roughly speaking there are other factors but what we are concerned with is not the absolute g but we are concerned with the relative g the relative free energies of the different phases so what we see here is that the free energy of s the solid has come much closer to the free energy of the liquid here there was a lot of difference and in fact the free energy of solid and liquid meets at one single point for temperature t m a that is at 100% a they both meet what this means is that at 100% both phases will coexist the liquid and the solid but at any other temperature uh, rather any other composition 
liquid will again be the stable phase solid uh, has higher free energy so that is not the stable phase now let us see these two to begin with in the free energy uh, rather in the phase diagram how do we draw first this so at t1 this t1 all composition we have liquid now we are at tma at tma all composition except for 0% b is liquid so everything till here is liquid over here we have the melting of a taking place so we just have a meeting point here okay now at temperature t2 what we see is that the solid curve is like this and the liquid curve is like this now the solid curve is not at all composition above liquid curve at some region from here to here the solid free energy is less from here to here the liquid free energy is less so you might think that for this region we will have solid this region we will have liquid because that is the lower free energy the problem is that in the intermediate composition zone a combination of solid and liquid leads to further lowering of free energy if you draw a tangent to the free energy curves for the solid and the liquid the tangent line will be something like this then along this line the free energy is along this line represents the free energy for the combination of solid and liquid okay so what now what do we have from here to here we have the solid having the minimum free energy from here till here the solid is no longer the lowest free energy rather the combination of solid and liquid is the lowest free energy from here till here liquid is no longer the lowest free energy again the combination of liquid and solid is the lowest free energy therefore from this point to this point the tangent is the lowest free energy line so in this whole region we'll have solid plus liquid coexisting this will be the two phase region here what do we have here we have the solid because this is for solid and further down here we have liquid okay so now corresponding to this at t2 let's go here at t2 till xlb till xlv we will have liquid this is the liquid in this region till xbs till xbs we will have solid and anywhere between xlb and xsb this region we have solid and liquid coexisting okay so thereby this is the two phase region fine this gives you the two phase region for the two phase region you need to know that the free energy is further reduced by the two phase coexisting now we go to melting point of b now what we'll have is that the solid is the stable state having lower free energy throughout except for 100% where solid and liquid coexist so this is the line solid throughout except for the 100 percent finally at temperature t3 what we see is solid is stable throughout and liquid is at a higher free energy throughout so always solid will exist at t3 thereby we get this line okay so by plotting the free energy curve for the different phases at multiple temperature what we can get is that we can get the complete phase diagram we take the regions or we take the phases which have the lowest free energy in the particular com uh, segment of the composition and thereby we get the complete phase diagram okay i hope 
this gave you a better picture and gave you a better idea about where exactly the phase diagram is coming from it is not coming out of empty space it has physics behind it though i have not gone into the details of exactly how the free energy curves are itself plotted that's a whole study in itself we will not go into that details but once we know the free energy diagrams then we can plot the phase diagram from them with this i will conclude today's lecture next lecture we will further continue discussion about phase diagrams till then have a great day goodbye